I'll give this a minute or so. So I've been in the industry for about 20 years now, and I'm going to walk you through the process of what I basically did getting out of high school, how I started making money online, being a one-man company, and bringing it to what it is today, which is an authority figure in this space, and really teaching other people how to do the same thing. So I'm give about another 30 seconds, let people continue walking in. And I'm going to show you guys all the actionable tips. I have a lot of slides to go through. And if you are taking notes, don't worry about it, because I have a nice bonus for everybody at the end where you can recap pretty much everything I'm going to show you. Uh, I'll give you live video of, of, of me recording and everything. So it's not within, it should be in the uh, app if they release them. But this one's more updated anyway. And ignore them. <laughs> At the end, we're all going to scream as loud as we can and make them jealous that they didn't come here. All right? All right, so my story, i give you a little brief. I got started when I was around 15, 16. Started making money online, figuring out different ways to do it. I'm going to walk you through my process, what I did. Now you guys can kind of do the same thing. So as I mentioned, I'm a one-man company. That's Foxy. She's my dog. She's my CFO. Sometimes when I leave the room, I don't know, I'll catch her on the computer. And she'll be like, I have no idea what I'm doing, but I see you doing it all day. So there she is trying to make money. She gets a few bones here and there, but in the beginning, that's me around maybe seven years old with my first $100 bill. And now everything I show you in this session is not to brag at all. This is just to try and relate mentality and show you what is possible, so don't ever take it the wrong way. So there I am with my first $100 bill. I got it for Christmas. I always had that mentality of, driving in the car with my parents and looking at billboards and seeing how many people see that every day and what are they paying for it and ridiculous stuff like that for like a seven or eight year old to think of. So that type of mentality led me to getting checks in the range of $300,000. And I'm actually going to get more into detail on that later, so don't get too focused on that right now. And the cool thing about all this is that you can actually do this from anywhere. That's my office in my parents' house when I was just in high school. And I made it the way I wanted to. It's an environment where you want to work. And if you're doing that and you enjoy what you're doing, you can really do anything with the internet. So here's a quick summary of how I got to where I am today. So as I mentioned earlier, the basis of most of this was off affiliate marketing. And the concept of affiliate marketing is that you're providing people to a company, and then they will provide compensation to you if they sign up for something, whether it be purchasing something or an email subscription or signing up for a survey. So I did that through Amazon.com, and I was able to send them six figures in revenue sales while I was still in high school. Here's a picture of one of my first checks. This was back in 1998. You can see it was only for $10.45. But that's all it takes. You just need a little tiny thing to see that things are going for you. Here we can see a breakdown of my monthly earnings from 1997, 98. Right now we're talking about checks in the $24 range. But you got to think, this accumulated and built up over time to where you are able to get possibly a $300,000 check in just one month. And that's what I'm referring to, $300,000 in just one month. I'm going to show you the exact process I did to get this. And on top of that, that was all profit, and it ended up making $800,000 within a four-month period. So in 2007, I launched my blog at ZachJohnson.com, where I will be blogging about how obnoxious they are next door. <laughs> just kidding. And so I actually launched this blog. And if you've been following the hashtag for FinCon, you'll have seen this article I've mentioned all over the place, 145 different FinCon speakers. So what do I get out of this? I get an awesome piece of content from my website, but then all the speakers at this event are actually tweeting that and sharing it as well because they're getting promotion out of it. So through this blog, I've been able to accomplish a lot. I was an affiliate marketer from 1995 to roughly early 2000s. And then in 2007, I launched a brand because I wanted to no longer just be an affiliate marketer. I wanted to actually become a brand and build something of my own. So through my blog, I was able to teach people how to actually do what I did online, which was create ad campaigns of their own, and I didn't have to charge them any money in the process. If you go online, try to make money, or look up anything like that, you're going to see a lot of gurus charging $500, $1,000, or whatever. I created that content, made it available for my audience, walked them through the process step by step, referred them to different networks, and then the networks would actually compensate me for it. So I was able to get my audience, which it, it says $2 million right there now, but it's actually $3 million plus now that my audience made just for me showing them what to do. So Leanne Lowe, who was the senior marketing manager at Neverblue, she was always sending me new testimonials for the site to let them know how appreciative they were of this. 
because I was basically sending them $2 million in new business just by giving people ways to make money with them, and it worked out well. And up in the corner, I say, always use testimonials to your advantage. So no matter what you're selling or offering as a service, testimonials can do the world for conversions. Now, starting a brand or business online isn't just about making money because you simply can't be motivated just by making money. You have to see what else is out there as well. And that's the opportunities. Right here, I'm talking to you because I became a brand and I'm authority in my space. If I was still just an affiliate marketer, you guys would never have heard of me. I still would have been behind the scenes and I still would have been reliant on checks coming in check by check. And on top of that, you can see here are a bunch of opportunities that were a result of the blog. Right here we have Mark Cuban, we have Hulk Hogan, John Chow in the middle, Matt Cutts from Google. Lots of opportunities, all because people came to the blog, found out who I was, and then followed up and gave me new opportunities. Once again, here I was speaking in Las Vegas at Blog World with John Chow, Darren Rouse from ProBlogger, Pro very popular blog, and also Brian Clark from CopyBlogger. Been featured on Fox News, ABC News. And I was also featured in a movie documentary in Hollywood, California, just specifically on people that have been able to start an entrepreneur based off their passion and make it into a full business. Recently, last year, I launched my own podcast where I basically interview everybody that I've met over the past 20 years and get into their story of how they've brought their business into what it is today, again, providing more value to my audience and letting them try and find new opportunities as well. And once again, all of this was done from the comfort of my own home and here we have my office right here. And more importantly, this can even be done from a kitchen table. And while you might think that's funny, there's actually a backstory to it because unfortunately I live in New Jersey and that's when Hurricane Sandy hit. So on that left side, you can see what my, backboard, my backyard looked like that day before Hurricane Sandy hit and you can see what it looked like the next day. Ended up having four feet of water come up higher, about two feet of water in the house. Woke up the next morning, the streets flooded like that. And that's actually an H2 Hummer and a big caravan over here. And you can see the whole street just completely flooded. So even right now, our house is still in the process of being raised. So this quickly became my home office for quite a while. But on the internet, you never would have known any of that because my business can be run anywhere. And that's the goal that I'm trying to teach everybody today. So through the power of affiliate marketing, blogging, and the internet, you can actually accomplish all of this as well. And it's easy to start a blog but it's not easy to make money. This little cat thinks he's gonna start a blog and make a million dollars. He's just gonna probably end up with a blog and not be able to buy all the catnip that he wants because there's over a billion active websites in the world today. So where are you in this mix? You might be somewhere, but how are people gonna find you? People aren't gonna find you unless you're listed in Google because if you wanna hide a dead body, the second page of Google is the place to put it. No one ever looks after the first page. First page of Google, type in Zach Johnson, boom, right there, number one. I pretty much rank for the whole page, one through 10. But guess what, Captain Picard wants you to know it's too easy to rank for your name. It's a big deal. You can rank for your name probably because there's not millions of people that have the same name as you. So let's try something a little different. Let's type in the word blogging. Very competitive, as you can see, there's already advertisements all over the place. But what do we also notice? We see that there's 6.9 billion websites. How could anyone possibly rank on the first page of Google for the word blogging unless you have a massive budget? Well, guess what? My site ranks number one for blogging. Of course, there's a bunch of advertisers here, but I don't have to pay for that. Number one blogging, 6.9 billion people, and I rank number one, and I'm a one-man person company. And how important is it to rank in Google? Here's a chart. More than 50% of the people are gonna click the first link. It goes down drastically if you are not within the first two spots. Picks up again at the bottom, but still, no one's ever going to that second page. So how can you possibly compete with a, hundred, with a billion websites on the world today? I did it, you can do it, and here's the formula. The first thing you wanna do is be able to find a niche. Then you wanna create content within that niche, grow a mailing list, get high quality backlinks to your website, and then find a way to monetize it as well. So I got 99 problems, but a niche ain't one. Great words said by Jay-Z. Now we're gonna talk about how you can find yours. So how do you find your sweet spot? It's right there in the middle. It's something that you're great at. It's something that brings you joy and it's something that people will pay you to do. This is something many people do wrong. If you follow your passion, you're not always going to find the profits. 
You need to find something that you are passionate about that you can niche down and actually make some money with it as well. I find your lack of passion disturbing, said Darth Vader. And this guy is like, okay, well, Darth Vader said it, but how can I actually find that if it's profitable? So once again, we can use Google. Type in something generic like basketball. I like playing basketball, but I don't really want to make a business with it. But if you follow these steps, you can have a profitable business. So what do we see? There's no advertisers if you go to basketball on Google. And why is that? Because it's way too generic. People go to ESPN to get scores and highlights. They don't want to buy anything. Let's try something different. Let's niche it down and go to basketball skills training. All right, now we start seeing some advertisers on that left side. You see point guard workout, basketball training, but we're still not niche enough. Let's niche this down one more time. Basketball jump training. Look at advertisers everywhere. So what does this mean? It means there's an audience, it means there's advertisers, and it means you can make a business out of this. So start with something that you're passionate about, niche it down and see how it goes. We went from basketball to basketball skills, and then we're left with jump training. We can also use the Google Keyword Planner to see if this is actually going to work out. Right here in the bottom corner, we have the average monthly searches, competition, and suggested bid sizes. Once you start looking at these numbers, you can say, okay, this is what people are ranking for, this is how advertisers are paying it, and these are the different niche markets that you can actually go after. Amazon is another awesome tool for this. Amazon sells everything under the sun, but something they also specialize in is books, and eBooks even more specifically, and that's something everyone can create. So to actually go through this process, we would treat it just like we did with Google. Type in jump training, you get a whole bunch of books. Look at that, telling you how to jump higher, dunk, and everything in between. You click on any of these, and you're gonna see right here the Amazon sales rank. Anything that ranks 150,000 or below sells pretty well. We can also look at the feedback of customer reviews, and that's gonna tell us what we need to know about how to create better content than the competition. We click on that, check out the one star reviews. Nobody cares about the five stars unless you're the one releasing it. it says he only gives minimal information, paid $4 and only got a pamphlet instead of a book, but it was decent information, just not much of it. Another guy says, I read it and got it for my son. Not a great read, but okay tips. Needed pictures of the workouts. So if you wanted to create something better than what's out there, see what's lacking in all of the best-selling books, and you'll have a lot of success with that. You can also use a tool called ClickBank, and that's a marketplace for digital advertisers and products where you'll actually earn in between around 75% commission because people don't need to physically build these or ship them out. Type in jump training. There's a lot of different programs to choose from. This one, for example, the Volker Shock System, one of the best-selling products out there pays a $50 commission, which is 75%. So if you have people going to Google, typing how to jump in higher, they end up on your resource website, and in addition to the content you're offering to them, you say, hey, one of the best guys out there, I recommend you check this out. You send them to this link, and you're gonna earn $50 every time someone buys that, and you didn't have to create the product, you didn't have to deal with any customers, you're just passing the lead through. Breakdown of finding a niche. Pick a topic you're passionate about, or what you want to build a business around. Niche it down as much as possible, and then check Google, Amazon, and other affiliate networks for profitability. And as I mentioned, I have a lot of slides to go through, but if anyone has questions now, I can answer them quickly as well. Good? Good, good. Right. Yeah, sure, actually getting into that as well. How to create content that converts. What did Gollum want all through the movie? He wanted the ring. What would he do for it? Anything, he even bit off Frodo's finger. So that's how you have to make your content. Create content that provides value, write interesting titles, keyword density, it doesn't matter about stuffing keywords into content anymore. You wanna create longer and more detailed content because that's what's gonna rank in Google. Google wants longer content now because that's what's gonna convert best. You also want to use images, meta tags, and formatting. Now, this is all basic information, but I'm going to talk now how to do it better. So going back to how I actually helped my audience earn millions of dollars through content on my blog, here's an example of how it was done. Right here, I walked people through the process of how to set up their first pay-per-click marketing campaign. At the bottom, it says, apply to Never Blue Ads. That's one of the affiliate networks that I use. That little tiny link right there was a massive reason why I was able to send $3 million in business to that company, 
and myself earn $50,000. That's not bad for just writing articles and getting traffic to my website and redirecting people. And at the same time, I know it's working because I wouldn't make any money if those people weren't as well. So looking at other content on the internet, we want to see what's currently out there, how we can do it better. Type in jump, how to jump higher into Google. Here's the first four listings. The first one's a video. Video works extremely well on Google because Google owns YouTube. There's lots of ways to make your content rank higher on YouTube, such as sending backlinks to it, getting embeds on other sites. And you can see right here, the second one is a step-by-step -step guide from wikihow.com. Anything that's a tutorial usually performs extremely well and also gets shared a lot on social media. Third one is a content post, and the fourth one is a list post. So if you want to rank for this type of content, you look at what's currently out there, figure out ways to do it better than them, and you'll eventually get there through effective link building as well. So Google also tells us what people are searching for. Whenever you type something into Google and you scroll down to the bottom, they're always recommending more terms for you. So what does this tell you? This tells you a lot more than actually helping you find better results. It gives you more ways to reach this audience as well. We started with how to jump higher for basketball, but you can also see there's terms for how to jump higher exercises and how to jump higher for volleyball. So if you're able to make money with how to jump higher with basketball, you can easily scale this out in many different directions. We can use Google Trends to see what's currently trending around the world and create content based off these topics or even use social media to create other content and pull them into your site. So don't go crazy with your content, just focus on delivering what your audience wants. Create better content than the competition. You wanna focus on articles that will result in leads. And by that I mean you don't wanna come out with a list of top 10 NBA dunks for the past 15 years. It's gonna get a lot of traffic to your website, but you're not gonna get a lot of people who wanna learn how to jump train. Instead you'd be better off why Vince Carter jumps four inches higher than the average NBA athlete. People who read that would be more likely to purchase a product like that. You also want to write detailed articles with one to 2,000 words and really focus on the visuals and formatting of it because that's going to help you a lot as well. And content creation will only get you so far. One of my good friends, Brian Dean of Backlinko, he said, SEO is all about content creation. It's about the content promotion. So you can create all the content in the world but remember when I said there's a billion sites on the internet today? How is anyone ever gonna find you? You need to rank on that first page of Google. So as Christopher Walken said on Saturday Night Live, I need more links. How to get high quality links to your website because without them, you're done. So why do you need links to your backside website? Because Google ranks sites in the search results based off the recommendations of other sites. So if everybody here was saying, wow, you gotta meet someone, there's a lot of authority going to that person and everybody's gonna to wanna to meet them. You can look at Google the same way. But you don't just want any type of website links coming to your site. You want trusted website links going back to you and you want them to be in the same authority and niche as you. So if you have a sports training website or basketball training, you don't want links coming from a food website or something that's completely not relevant because it's not gonna pass the same link juice to your site. But one of the best ways to do this is actually through guest blogging. And that would be by writing an article and reaching out to different websites and then putting guest blogging into action. And there's many benefits to guest blogging, such as site owners are getting free content, the people that are creating the content to put on these websites are getting free exposure, you're reaching a whole new audience, it's also a great way to establish yourself in any niche. And I'm gonna be showing you some examples of this as well. So Will Farrell from the movie, he said he sent Matt Cutts an email to do a guest blog on his site. What an idiot. That's because Ge Matt Cutts is out there and he's like, guest blogging's dead. Well, it's not dead. And I'll give you some examples of why guest blogging works extremely well when you approach it the right way. Search Engine Journal is a massively huge website. And I actually wrote for them several times. And you can see this one article right here got over 5,000 social shares. So I wrote this awesome article. They got awesome co content out of it. Lots of people went to their website. I get my face and name right at the top. I get a lot of exposure out of it. Once you get on one website, it's a lot easier to get on other ones. Here's an example of guest blogging on a average type of website that's not massively huge, but it still has a lot of value. So I wrote this one called Five Brilliant Ways to, Make, to Get More Social Shares to Your Blog. And on the bottom of it, you'll actually see an author bio section. And this is what most guest bloggers want. You can see it says about Zach Johnson. Zach, Johnson, the first link actually goes to my author bio, which will show all of the articles I wrote on this website. 
is an online marketer with 15 years of experience, you can view my blogs at Zach Johnson and Blogging Tips. If anybody clicks on those, they'll actually be sent to my website, but at the same time, Google can see that this website is vouching for me and sending link juice back to my sites to help it rank higher. I also got an article published on Yahoo Small Business Advisor. Right there, you can see the byline by Zach Johnson. Time Magazine, Zach Johnson of blogging.org. And stuff like this is what works very effectively, and that's how I rank number one in the world for the word blogging. Also was recently featured on Forbes this past week. You can see again, Zach Johnson has 20 years of experience. That link goes directly to my website, so you can only imagine how many people are going to Forbes every day. So how do you find opportunities like this? Well, once again, Google is our friend. Just go to Google and type in some keywords that are related to your niche. And you want to come up with as many synonyms for your niche as possible. We're talking about jump training with basketball as our main focus, just like we did from the beginning. So we're going to go with basketball training, how to jump higher, dunk videos, and whatnot. But we also need to come up with some keywords and terms for guest writing and opportunities that might get triggered in the search results. So words like Write for us, guest post, contribute, and guest blogger are what you want to type in. You can bind the two of them, so it's now saying basketball blog, write for us. The second link right here, right in the title, it says write for us. So if you have a website teaching people how to jump higher for basketball, you want to get on sites like this so you can not only grow your expertise, you can gain some powerful backlinks as well. You click on it, typically end up on a site that's going to walk you through the process of how you can fill out a form or submit an article to them. They're going to also tell you what type of content they're looking for. We can do this again and see another listing for a site, allsportstalk.net. Just click it. Top right corner, you're going to see it says, write for us. There's going to be a lot of websites that have write for us, contribute to us. On random websites you're visiting, like this one right here, right at the top corner, it says, write for us. So when you're randomly looking at websites on the internet that are in your same niche, always look for this type of opportunity. Because instead of spending $1,000 or $2,000 on link building, you can actually just spend maybe an hour or two writing an amazing article, get it placed on a website, and get a ton of value in it process. There's also better ways of doing this. You can visit a ton of different websites and hope that you're just going to find it. You can scour the search results, or you can actually reverse engineer the process. So I rank number one in the world for the term blogging, and there's a lot of other websites that rank. But I also want to see how I can continually prove on other keywords and terms as well. So I would do that by maybe going to Google and typing in how to start a blog, which is something I would love to rank for. But we can do it again with an example of jump training. And right here we can see top 15 exercises for higher vertical jumps. That is a perfect article for increasing your traffic, but increasing traffic that is actually going to buy the product as well. So we figure out which website it is, and then we go to a tool like semrush.com, type in the backlink that we want to analyze, and we can actually look at the link structure for their website. And we can look at the anchor text as well and see the guy's name, and we can reverse this to see which site he's guest blogging on. So that'll bring us to these examples where you can see guest post by Joe DeFranco, and he's writing on various different sites and gaining backlinks to his site, which is helping him rank higher in the search results. So guest blogging best practices, you really want to create high quality content. I have a lot of blogs and I'm continually getting 10 to 20 requests from random people every day that want to write on my sites. Most of them don't get accepted because I don't want to accept so many articles, but at the same time, people are using unethical methods such as putting links into these articles that they're getting paid for, and I'm not getting compensated out of it, and they're just trying to throw links out real fast. Every once in a while, you will get some high quality backlinks or article submissions, but you have to pay attention to who you accept. And at the same time, you want to use your real name, photo, and your site URLs. Because after all, you're trying to grow your expertise. Anything that you see out there that says, by Zach Johnson, it was actually written by me. You want to promote the articles that you get shared on other websites. Because if they're going to get more traffic to their website, not only is it going to pass more link juice to your site, they're also going to really appreciate it and accept more content from you in the future. Lots of sites have different guidelines. So you want to follow them because you don't want to annoy them with other things that they shouldn't be focusing on. And there's also tools to help you with this process as well, like uh, reaching out to different companies and doing reverse engineering of the backlinks. So you want to really explode your mailing list because that's how people are going to come back to your website time and time again. And signups to your email list are important because you're going to get a lot of traffic, but how many of them are actually going to come back? 
Now, every blog and website needs to have a mailing list because over 70% of the people that come to your website for the first time, they're not going to come back. And it really has nothing to do with the content on your site or whether it's the greatest information out there. It's just there's way too much information overload out there. But once you do have a mailing list and you have someone with their email address putting it down, you can send them future updates forever, re increase return traffic, and also notify them of any promotions that you might have coming up. You see that form right there on the right, your left probably, side? That's a pretty ugly box, and that's not going to work for you. So that is the one thing you want to stay away from. There's absolutely no value in signing up for that. It says, newsletter, this newsletter is free and pretty, and we promise not to spam you. Well, you don't expect to get spammed in the first place, but it's not offering of anything of value. So instead, you really have to give your audience something to give away for free that they'll get value out of. You want to get in their face so that they see this opportunity, and then you also want to set it up with an autoresponder as well. So here's a perfect example. If you go to blogging.org, the actual blog of the site, the article's on the left side, and then on the right side, you will see the subscription box. And what they're getting is a free six-figure blogging cheat sheet. Almost everyone that comes to this website wants to create a successful blog and make money online, so that's exactly what they're going to get. All it takes is a name and email address, and they're going to get it. That's going to increase conversions like crazy. Another example of this can be seen on johnchow.com. He doesn't have a form for you to fill out, but all you have to do is click the button to get his How I Went From Zero to Over 100,000 a Month ebook. It's going to pop up, put your email address in, and it's good to go. Another example can be seen on Pat Flynn's blog, and it's actually within the content. So it says, like what you've read, click here, a pop up window is going to come up, get on his mailing list right away. And then the pop up window, that is the best way to get people to join your mailing list because it comes up right when you visit a website, it blocks everything else out, and look how beautiful it is in the process. So you go to John Chow's website, you can sign up for his free ebook. Another example, John Lee Dumas, Entrepreneur on Fire, get my top 12 internet resources. If you follow John Lee Dumas, you're definitely gonna wanna get that. WP Beginner, one of the top WordPress sites on the internet. You go there, they're getting, giving away free WordPress videos. All it takes is an email address, why would you not fill it out? Neil Patel, he has a unique one. He says, do you want to get more traffic to your website, yes or no? You click no, you probably come up with another one saying, are you sure? Fill up, click yes, that email address is going to go right in there. Even ugly forms work. It doesn't matter. You're getting in the face of the audience. You're definitely going to pay attention to it. It's not beautiful, but if you want to get more traffic, higher rankings, and more money, you're probably going to put your email address in there. It's also perfect for branding. My friend Lewis House. His is all over the place, but it's perfect because he wants to get his brand out there and grow his authority. Right at the bottom, you can see where it says Time Magazine, Sports Illustrated, Forbes. His name is associated with all these brands, further building his authority. So now that you have all that in place and you're getting people onto your mailing list, how are you going to automate the process so you don't have to do this manually each time? Well, the best way to do this is with an autoresponder. So you have people that are going to come to your website to get your free gift. All they have to do is enter their email address and get whatever you're giving away. In this example, I'm giving away a free ebook. Once they enter that information, it then goes to AWeber or whoever your mailing list hosting is. AWeber will then send that person an email to confirm their email address. And when they click the link to confirm it, they're then going to be sent to your confirmation page where they can get that free gift. At that same time, that email address is going into the database at AWeber for you to mail out whenever you want. But the best thing to do is set up an autoresponder series so that you can keep following up with this person on a daily basis or weekly basis to keep growing that engagement. So when someone signs up to this, typically I'll say, OK, here's your free gift. Click here to download it. And then a few days later, I'll say, hey, did you get a chance to download that ebook? Let me know how it was and if you have any questions. The fifth day, I'll say, OK, I hope you enjoyed the book. If you're still having trouble starting a blog, here's a few resources, or let me know what you need. And you can actually scale this out over the course of several months or even a year if you have enough content. So when setting up a mailing list, you want to give away something for free in exchange for the email address. You need to incentivize this. Add multiple methods. Yeah, the pop-up might seem annoying when you go to a website the first time, but it's just a click, and you're not going to see it for the next 30 to 60 days. And then you want to create an autoresponder series so it's continually working for you time and time again. 